Welcome to Antoinette and Friends. We have rolled up here at Punk Street Studios very early this morning. Uh, Luciana has been working through the night and we're gonna bring her on really soon. Um, but this has been an interview that I've been looking forward to for a really long time. Luciana is one of my nearest and dearest. And it was only until I started doing the research and started really looking at her body of work that I just, I just gave me move, room to pause and just really take in how long and how powerfully she's been doing what she does. Um, I didn't realize she started when she was 16. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of an, in, an intro to her glory. You don't know it, but you have heard her from Dawson's Creek to absolute, absolutely fabulous movie to Barry for Bela Camigo. This was the summer anthem of 2018. She had 80 million views in four months. She's a global platinum recording artist. Luciana Caparasso is an icon powerhouse in the dance world spanning over two decades and nine number one billion billboard dance hits. Billboard. I have, <laughs> you're here. Yes, I'm here. I'm so happy. She's the girl that started the electro new wave movement with that multi-platinum, yeah, yeah. The girl that liked the Gucci Gucci and Smash. <laughs> I like that. The girl that put the punk into EDM with over one million Spotify what? hits. Amazing. <laughs> From her LA studios, art studios, Lajana has just released her first collection, which we are surrounded by. It's a series of icons and abstracts, mashups of color, vibrancy, and humor, dripping with resin and punk. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you through the night working Luciana. <laughs> And I, hi, can I just say, yeah. what an amazing intro. Yeah. I well. would like to write that intro down and live with it <laughs> on a day-to-day -day basis. Well deserved. So this is me. So I've been like working through the night. I've been totally working it. But you work with your lipstick, which I think is really, it doesn't help you. Well, what create. it does is it makes me feel powerful. <laughs> but sometimes what I do is uh, I feel so fabulous sometimes that I do that. Yeah. And then I just like, I take this off as well. Well, take it off. And this is what I wear through the night. Very <laughs> casual, like. <laughs> because, you know, because I'm a casual kind of girl. <laughs> I love it. Right? And so I work in that, and then I take this off, and then I just sit there. And then she becomes in this fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. And even sometimes with that, I put a heel on. Because I can. Because you can. Yeah, and so I'm like epoxy resin with a, with a heel. How long have you been uh, have you been trying to do this interview? Ah, thank you. Fabulous. Let her put, let her put her heels on let me so put she gets her mojo going. I'll tell you why, because the stool's quite high and I'm actually quite short. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, so just to put the heel on is quite necessary. Absolutely. And it and it gives me that feeling of fabulosity. There you go. I'm All right, here. So here we are. I'm present. Present Hi. and accounted for. Yes. So I, I want I want to find out first of all. I know we're looking at the camera and you're right here, but I want to know what you have been working on that has taken you through the night, mm. and how many deliverables you're you're having, and what are you doing? Like well, actually, you... over the last year, mm -hmm. I have been. I chose. I've decided mm -hmm. to do. Um, I don't know why I decided this, but <laughs> I just did. I was like, right, I'm going to do twelve abstracts. And I'm going to do 12 pop icons. So I've just been finishing up, actually. Uh, you can't see it here, but it's a Kurt Cobain. And it's over there. Mm, there you oh, go. There we go. Just Kurt been finishing Cobain. that. Yeah. That's amazing. That's gorgeous. The Thank you. But yeah, so that's what I've been doing. And that's what I've been up to. Has it been a natural progression for you to go from music to yeah. Art? It's not really a progression, it's just something I've always done. I was actually going to go to um, art college, uh -huh. and um, I wanted to go to Putney Art College, and I used to walk by, by it in London, and I used to think, oh, I'm never going to get in there. I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not good enough, I'm not this, I'm not that. So I used to walk by it and had this big thing about Putney Art School. As it happens, I got a record deal. Okay, so that well, whole changed my as whole. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> how does that happen? Something like that. Or randomly, I just got a record. Yeah. 
So you were singing. I know I saw some footage of you and Nick <laughs> Clo, your your husband. Yes. Very, very early footage of you guys. So you guys have been doing it a really long I've time. I've been doing it forever. I was um, I actually did backing vocals in a soul band. Uh huh. Got my little backing vocals done. <laughs> so I did that when I was um, 15. And then um, I've just always done it. I've always done music. Um, but I always wanted to do art. And I was all, I always did art to along, art along the way. Along the way, yeah. Okay. So and then, is... then when I wanted to give up music, Am I jumping the gun here? No, 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 no. <laughs> but when I wanted to give up when I was 30, I was thinking, God, this is just too much, it's too much. I thought, well, I'm just going to go back to my art and I'm going to dedicate everything to art. So I stopped when I was 30 um, after my record deals didn't happen. And I thought I was a failure. So I thought, well, I'm just going to go and eat lots of cake. Which is what you do. <laughs> we're gonna kind of eat lots of cake and like dye my hair red and just like be an art, be an artist. Yeah. And so um, I had an exhibition in mm -hmm. Soho, which sold out. Soho, New York. Soho, London. London. Okay. Yes. Um, and I was like, right, this is what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm in it. We put a bit more weight on because I've been eating a lot of cake. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden, a track came in, um, and it was, and this is why I talk about like having this dream. And then um, you holding on too tightly to the dream, and then when you let, let it go and you let it breathe, it comes back to you. Because eleven weeks afterwards, the, this track came in called "Yeah Yeah." Okay, and when you say it comes in, it explain was, to us it was what, a, how does that come to you? Yeah, it was through a, your agent. Somebody yeah, contacts you. Okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So the agent I was with, it was a big instrumental in Ibiza, and it had done really well that whole year, and they needed a vocal on it, and then. It was a track with Body Rocks and D Ramirez, and um, it came in, and, and it was the literally the beginning of this particular electro sound. I'd never heard it before. No one had heard this sound, and I spoke, <laughs> I spoke to my writing partner Nick, and when I could, because I was so into art at the time, I said, "And what age is this? 30. 30. Okay. Right, because so so I'd had record deals from eighteen to thirty. Right. Five. So were you well known in England? No. Which is but you I'm, had record deals, they were released. That didn't happen. Nothing happened. I'd had like, yeah, I've got a record deal. Oh my God, it's brilliant. This is like 18, 19. Yeah. And then it didn't happen. I was like crying for like two years. And then I got another record deal when I was 24. Massive deal with Sony in America. Yeah, it's going to happen. Ah! Didn't happen. I was like cried. Cried again for two years. And then... <laughs> So it's tumultuous, going. tumultuous 20s. Yeah, yes. of course. Of I kept course. going, I kept going. And yeah. I got two more record deals with Island Record. I mean, it's great. As I'm saying this, yeah. uh, it's big, it's, mass it's massive. It's massive and when you're young, you don't really realise what's happening to no. you. And part of the process is failure. It's or totally. perceived failure. Well, this is it. So I reckon my theory is if I'd had success when I was 21, I might have been a bit of a twat. I think that all the time. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. might have been a bit pompous, like, this was supposed to happen. Right. You know, this is my calling. Um, and thankfully it didn't, because yeah. what happens is throughout the failure, you become more 3D. <laughs> right. You become, you know, more of a... You become more deep. Exactly. You become more resilient. And you, you become more focused. And grateful. <laughs> and grateful. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. We were talking about this last night, uh, Nick, just fun. about getting... <laughs> She's still She's still <laughs> She's Thank still you. Thank you. Thank you. No, but I mean, you get to a certain age. It's like you know who you are. Yeah. And you know who you are and what you want to give. Yeah. And that the offering is is much more much more great. And also, I had the wrong perspective in the twenty in my twenties because I thought I, I thought I was a failure because. I hadn't paid my mum and dad's mortgage. These are all the things that I wanted to do. Like, oh, I, I've succeeded if I have a successful record deal, if this happens, if these external um, opportunities happen, which I thought were defining me, which right. I thought were the meaning of and success. And they're all the things that you set up for yourself, the list that yeah. you put together, yeah, the that you decided, right? It's like, what am I doing? I'm like, why am I doing but that? But that's what you do in your 20s, because you think that's what success, well, I, that's what I did anyway. That's yeah. what I thought success meant, like, you had a successful deal, but I just kept kept thinking, well, none of these deals worked out, but I was successful because they gave me the money to sustain myself right. and only do music. So that's right. all I had to do. Right. 
So that is successful. And that says to me that you are a true artist, that no matter what, no, but I mean, seriously, no matter what, watching your body of work, I'm like, you never stopped. No, I didn't. And, and you kept even, growing and evolving, and, but that's who you are. I think that now, I think, oh my God, this is what I've always done. Like, I've never had to go and do anything else. So I'm so I mean, grateful. I'm amazing. So, so, but psychologically, I was like, <gasps> like so, yeah, because you're choice. hard on yourself. Because I'm hard on myself, and I I determined success to, as an outcome, which is just crap. Right. So so then when I got to thirty, I'm like, I remember specifically sitting in the bath, and like, I was just so unhappy. Like, oh, I was just so, so like tired. Right? I was tired. It's on all these expectations that you place on yourself, and all these, um, you know. Um, things that you think are gonna happen in the future. It's just so irrelevant. So I, I sat in the bath and I remember thinking, what would happen if I just let go of everything? What, what, how would I feel? What would, you, what would I do? And I remember sinking in the bath thinking, oh, God, I let go. And I wrote it in steam on the on the tile. I just let go. And, um, and that was a defining moment for me. Oh, and that was what I was telling you about the dream. Mm -hmm. Hold it. Oh, this is why maybe these these record company deals didn't happen because I'm like holding on so tight to it. Do you know what I mean? Totally. It so it happened to me that I, I I always wanted to be an actor, and it finally got to a place, and I was just like, Do I really want this? So you was and like, I let it go, and literally the biggest part with the biggest cast. So how long were you movie, when you let it go mentally? Twenty. I thought, that's about the right age, isn't it? That's yeah. obviously how it's And it's very over. free to so do that. Because so, you're not, it's like it's like your whole image when you're in your 20s is based on what you think about yourself and what you're supposed to be. And yeah. when you let that go, then yeah. your true calling. You're right, what you through. just said there, what you're supposed to be. Yeah, who, you think, who determines that? It's just like, what are we doing? Yeah, no. I, this is why you are where you are now. Well, I, so I, fabulous, so beautiful, you. so thank prophetic you. what you're doing. Yeah, I feel good. So, so just to finish that story of like the the feeling of like that I hadn't succeeded and expectations not being met, um, I sat in the bath and then eleven weeks later this track came in, and I said to Nick, "Don't get it," because I was all like belligerent. I don't get it. Don't understand it. I'm not doing it. And, and Nick said, "Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> go just go and write it and shut up." So that's what happened. And I was oh. like, "Ooh, in the studio." So I wrote this, these lyrics about the industry. You think you got it all worked out, but you don't know nothing, nothing, nothing. And I wrote it about EMI, about all these people that I felt like had you know, wronged me in the industry. And that, so I had to pretend it was a, about a relationship because no one wants to hear you moaning about the industry. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, I... But you got I, it out. I got it out, and then 11 weeks later after that, it was number two, and it literally changed my world. So in that moment, I was like, oh, my God, dreams do come true. Mm -hmm. And then I said to myself, I would never um, change the bold goalposts. I would never go, but now I want more, and now I want more, because I was so happy to have had that feeling. Right. That I, I said to myself, e everything else from that is the icing on the cake. That's beautiful. Yeah. And so that's why I'm living in a state of gratefulness. And it shows. Thank you. Yeah. I, f I feel like if you, the only thing that you can do with pain and suffering and hardship is turn it into art. Oh, I love that. I mean, I mean it's, I'm going to steal it's, that. I'm <laughs> going to use that. the next lyric. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm turn mm -hmm. it into art. So, <laughs> so I, I want to know a little bit. Um, a little bit about what happened. So, so just to give you guys an overview, right before I would say it was January, February, Luciana and Nick were putting together an installation of her art, and it was her <laughs> coming out, you know. And so they were planning this huge event, and she was going to have an installation, and it was going to be this big, huge PR push. <laughs> I'm and <loving>. then. <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm not and, crying. <laughs> no, we were really upset. Yeah. And then COVID hit. Yeah. And obviously everything stopped. And then you got COVID. COVID. And mm -hmm. I watched Nick and Lucci go through 
but you were the really the only two people I know that had it. And I was really adamant as well. I'm not getting COVID. I'm really super fit. I've got the I've got oh look Nicholas. I've got the um constitution of an ox. I've got the constitution of an ox. I'm gonna be fine. And literally, yeah. as I'd said that, I got it. And, and I, I could see it uh, actually weeks before. I don't know whether you oh, thought you, you had I it. I remember you looking I at came, me. Yeah, but... I, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just like, she is so vibrant. And I just thought there's a struggle in there and that you weren't sure what was happening. It, so they both had it. And, yeah. and, and it was a long haul. And so I had it first. Thankfully, and then he was like, "Oh, you're gonna be fine." It was really brilliant, and then he got it. <laughs> so we, so we were looking after each other. But I just literally couldn't walk. Uh, and there was one point where I thought, "I think I might need to go to hospital," and that was near the end. But we had it like heavy for three weeks. Yeah, you couldn't lift your arm. It was, oh, you couldn't really walk properly. It was, I could go from the bedroom to the sofa. It's scary when that happens. It's awful when you're so no, vibrant, right? And you don't feel like you have control over what's happening, and then you don't know whether it's something you should go to the hospital about, and then you don't go. What happens if you yeah. don't go? And thankfully, yeah. you guys had each other, but you, you guys got through it, and it but you used the time during COVID to yes. create this incredible art. I, Lauren, I would love to throw some of the photographs of some of the pieces that she's been working on. And then um, you've had something pretty amazing happen uh, with the M magazine, La Revista M, ah, which yeah, is an Italian M. magazine that she's on the cover of. Yeah. Uh, produced by Photo Bomb Productions. Yeah. And, um, and the photographer is Dennis Leopold, who's like, whoa. I was like, whoa, this is Dennis Leopold. <laughs> Yeah, and then ended up being in the pool. Yeah, right after that. in in this fabulous um, um, green sparkly dress, falling off the diving board backwards. Then it's fabulous. Can we show that? Show. I would love to show that, Ryan. And this is an eight-page spread in M Millennio, which so hasn't come out yet. No. Okay, so we're looking at pictures of Luciana's art, and these pieces are quite large. Mm. How large are these pieces? That well, this so at? this one. So if you can see the bowery behind. If you can see this here, that's 48 by 48 inches. Mm -hmm. Ah, so he's right. Okay, yeah, so these are the little videos. Um, yeah, so that's 48 by 48 on wood and epoxy resin, dripping in epoxy resin. Which I love that you didn't even know how to use resin, and no. then all of a sudden you're a master at using and resin. And you know what I call it now because I'm from London. Mm -hmm. In England we go, oh, epoxy this. So <laughs> I'm like, I call it epoxy resin now because it's so bloody messy. It's oh, yeah, like oh, it's like goo. It's like goo. I've got one piece of art here, which is actually, which I call it my work, my work in progress, because it one? this one, this red, it's called my spine is tingling. All my art. Oh wait, oh yeah. Oh wait, hold on. Do you see that? Do you see that, or am I going the wrong way? Are you going the wrong way? Oh wait, no, there yeah, it is. Yeah, that's it. So this one's called my spine is tingling, and all my art pieces are called after, named after my tracks. Um, but this one keeps seeping, <laughs> so I'm like. She's still working. So at the bottom of this, there's still some like hot sticky resin. I love it. It's a work in progress. I'm, I'm just, in, in, I'm impressed, but I'm also intrigued with your process. <laughs> and how, it, how, how does it come to you? Does it come to you in a lyric? Does it come to you in a feeling? Often. Do you go, oh, I see something in the news and I'm like, I have to put. Yes, I put all of those things together. Yeah. So I have like this, ad hoc approach to it. I, I saw um I saw David Bowie in a documentary piece together words um uh, in and he put them uh, he rearranged them in uh with sellotape mm -hmm. and he started to form these ad hoc sentences which before wouldn't have made sense but now they make a new sense because they're just all messed up and just um distorted and yeah so um that's so that's how i write my lyric um and then i'll i'll hear somebody talking on a bus and they'll say oh stranger things have happened i don't just like sayings right that i'll write down continuously that stick in your head i always like, write okay, everything I have down to do that. like your subconscious mind is talking yeah. to you let's use that exactly and then i'll put that in sometimes i'll see a lyric and then i think how can i i sometimes i see the, the visual aspect of the lyric so that's how I work. So it's just like a whole 360. 
as I as I I sit here and I listen to you, <laughs> I know you so well, and yet I don't know you. But your whole life is an artistic expression, mm. and I. Oh, are we not live here? Oh, is that I'm live here? <laughs> Hi guys, I forgot to turn you on. <laughs> I'm doing an interview and I forgot to go okay. live. We thought we were live on Instagram. You was live, wasn't I you? don't think I was live. I'm live now. <laughs> you just missed that whole explanation of everything that is Luciana, but that's okay. We have it on Facebook. Yeah, but, um, yeah and I just, I, if, you know, I'm always fascinated by um, childhood right. and how uh, inside yourself as a child, you feel pulled to certain things and what, what what's your family background uh how that inspired you or challenged you and gave you the uh desire you know, yes we were talking about that with nick it's like why do certain people follow their dream uh and why some people just can't can't do it and i think some some of it has to do with a childhood background and some of it has to do with having such adversity in your childhood background that mm. it causes that you to move. You, yeah. yeah, and so I know you have a father who's an artist. Yes, so, and um, he basically looked after us for, first and foremost. So he came from Italy. He, he studied to do law because every Italian does. And then <laughs> he, but he said, I wish my mum and dad had given me a toolbox when I was little. Yeah. So that he could have created, but he's an artist, and so he did. He was like in Italian vogue. He did all these carpentry, just like really amazing work, woodscapes, but work. So he did carpentry. Dina, Dina, look, Dina, Dina. Dina. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> how we have a lot of people around. Apulia. So the first, not, so, not too far. The first time I met her, I'm like, mm -hmm. oh my god, she actually speaks Italian. <laughs> This is great. We got to go to the interview. Yeah, but guarda, tu parli più bene di me. Non è vero. No, io tu pensi che è così, ma non è così. I'm just a good bullshit artist. <laughs> Honestly. Ma guarda, io non posso parlare più italiano. Veramente solamente perché è, è più facile per me per parlare inglese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sì. Okay. And then, and that's it. And back, I sounded back brilliant. To English. I sounded brilliant. But that's oh, yeah, it's extent. a beautiful accent you have. Yeah, so, yeah. wait, so anyway, so he yeah, so studied he, law. So, he studied law. He wished mum and dad brought him a, a toolbox or something to create with when he was younger because he didn't have the means. But he's always had that creativity. So, he got thwarted in that aspect, but then he managed to put it through his carpentry. So, when he stopped doing carpentry, he went back to what he always wanted to do, which was be an artist. And he do, does these 3D woodscapes. I mean, he's amazing. I mean, I love that. So he found a way yeah. to express himself. Yeah. He Which says, isn't easier to do in Italy, I don't think. No, not in he, he He's here he, now. He's here. Yeah, but I'm saying as a child. But and as a not, child, yeah. yeah. As a child, you can't... Um, you, I mean, it's all very... When you say he's here, he's in England. He's in England. He moved. He fell in love with my mum from London. <laughs> and, um, and then he stayed here. And he basically stayed in. And then, you know, he used to go on the tube in a three-piece suit and then get up, take the three-piece suit off and then go and do his work, yeah. carpentry, and then, <laughs> and then put the three-piece suit back on. Isn't that fabulous? Yeah. And he's lovely because he's very well educated. So he's the one who taught me about art and gave me a canvas and gave me um, knowledge and opened my mind to to everything in the world. That's beautiful. And yeah, your mother so, was also, yeah. Yeah, someone who encouraged you. Yeah, my mum was very much, um, you follow your dream, do what you need to do, but just be careful. Yeah. That's what exactly. she was like. Yeah, exactly. So that's it. Which yeah. is really lovely. And I'm lucky. Oh, yeah. That's lucky, and isn't I it? I feel lucky too. Yeah. a lot of families push it, you in a certain direction yeah, exactly. and they feel like this is what is best for you, but only you know what's best for you. Exactly. And it's your journey, not theirs. Exactly. So thankfully, you know? Because, look, my dad's family just said what's best for you is law. Do you know what I mean? And it wasn't. So so I'm grateful that we got the opportunity to just be us. All three of us. It's me and my sisters. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, so recently you became American citizens. <laughs> I was yes, like, wow. I did. Yes, I did. It was very, very strange. And it's all very formal. And I got to uh, pledge the allegiance. No, yes. I thought that was pretty, pretty awesome. I didn't, I didn't I did. know that I that did was well. happening. Yeah. But also, I, I have a certain amount of respect watching you guys, you know, to go to a foreign country yes. and to, I mean, I know 
a lot of people do it, but to watch you guys come here and be able to be successful yeah. and live beautifully and we really had to adapt. Really, we had to prove ourselves because we came over here, we were writing for Erica Jane, actually, who's just okay, so, so this lovely. this is what I want to know. Like, how did you come here? Yeah, yeah. So we um, so we had that track, Yeah, Yeah, which was my pivotal moment, aged 30. Um, and the booking agent said to me, if you get if you get 18 months out of this, you'll be really lucky. And here I am, like, you know, 16 years later. And the reason why is because I'm because we write everything. But so we kept we continue to write, continue to write, continue to have success. Then our friend Jeff the Dad heard of us. And then we did a track called I Like. So he had heard of you, yeah, contacted you. Yes. And said, I want you to come over and work. Had we had um, I like that already then? No. Right, okay. So come over and write for Erica Jane. Oh, hi. That's me, that's me in the straw dress. I love that. <laughs> Isn't that fabulous? Gee, what was the track that you wrote for Erica Jane? The, the track was called uh, One Hot Pleasure, and it was a number one on the Billboard dance charts. She's just so lovely. Anyway, she we, seems lovely. Oh, she's really, really lovely. So when we were here, we were like, we had the three month visa. And I'm like, I can't go back. Get to it. I can't go back. I said to Nick, I can't go back to England. So then because, we like, because, because what did you what did you think? What did you think about that? It's like, you know, you're wearing flip-flops here and you're super chill. You're like, hey, hey. And it's how warm are you? weather and it's, yeah. it's laid and back. And I always used to stand by the radiator in England, yeah. be really cold. And I always used to sing this song. Going where the weather suits my clothes. Oh, oh. <laughs> but I was like, I don't know where I was going because I didn't have LA in mind. I just knew I didn't want to be standing next to a radiator. So um, <laughs> so, um, so then, yes, yeah, so we got the opportunity and then Nick, who's like, work and work and work and like, we've got to do, because you have to prove you're an extraordinary citizen to get the green card. That's really? What, yeah. I don't know anything about that. Yeah, to get that, so you have to but fill and, out. And, you, and how do you prove you're an extraordinary? Well, I just, I just show them my collars. <laughs> I just say, look, look at me, I'm fabulous. Yeah, look at me, I'm fabulous. Um, <laughs> and right? that got me through. That got me through. Oh, it's gotten you through a lot. You, you, you light up a room, that's for sure. But that wouldn't have got me through. They were like, yeah, that would be great. Show me the paperwork. Um, but we had this like massive folder of like all the things that we've done. So we worked so hard. We worked like really, really hard, and we, and we got it. We got the green card. We were like over the moon, and then and that's it. So that's what kept us here. And uh, I'm just so grateful to be here because I feel like LA, you can thrive. LA, you can. Oh, uh, who's that? That's my little dog. Is that Ronnie? You're up Hey, Ronnie. <laughs> I I have to say, watching. Uh, Luciana and Nick work together, husband and wife team. Mm. Nick is uh, an incredibly talented producer, songwriter, performer. You yeah. With the Pet, Pet Shop Boys on tour for quite a few years, right? I mean, and, and to watch a couple work and spend so much time together, I find very inspiring. Yeah. And they really, I'm always looking, I'm always like, oh, Oh, uh, yeah. How is this not working? Like, <laughs> what am I not seeing? And I just, you know, I just don't see it. It's really lovely to watch. No, it's lovely. It is. And he's just brilliant because I'm all, when we write together, he's all about the spaces in between. And I'm all about the syncopation and the, the pop. He's all about where's the space. So it works. I'm on the one, he's on the two. It's true. It's true. I love that. I love it as well. I'm good in your shit. You'll think. <laughs> what did you say? He said, I'm good in your shit. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And that he pushes you Thank to you. Uh, to be better. Or he pushes you when you're not it, you're not feeling it. Well, a lot of the time of lately, because I've been really focused on all my art, he's like, he'll call me from the studio and go, get in here, you've got a vocal to do. And I'm like, oh, I'm just finishing doing my poxy resin. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's cool. It, it works really well. And, I'm, and then again, it goes back to just feeling grateful that you're in this space and that you can wake up and that you can create. Because that's just such a blessing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's I, feel, I, know, I, I, as I sit here with you and I sit here with you at this age, and I, we, we talk about that a lot. How, how vital we feel. Yes. And how much we. You know, back in the day, when as you get older, it's just like you become less vital somehow. And we, uh, yeah. a lot of a lot of us here, who are creators and artists, and just feel more vital now than we ever have. And Isn't it's it? like 
our greatest success is, is ahead. Yet to, yeah. yeah, it's just ahead. Absolutely. I feel exactly the same. I feel more connected. And I think that's just about getting older, isn't it? And that yeah. when you I love it. I just love I getting mean, older. My mother, who's an Italian woman, very beautiful. She thank you, Lauren. My mother would always say, every age. <laughs> Every age yeah. bring their own beauty. Oh, I and love I remember that. as a child, I would see my mother, and through the years, she I just love was that. so beautiful. But she wasn't trying to be young. She just was living her best life as best as she could. I love that. And you could see it all over her. My mother's ninety-eight. She can touch her toes. She's <laughs> she doesn't she doesn't like to be around old people. They said that when you get older, you start to lose your eyesight simply because you get that nice sort of like. Um, glamour glow. <laughs> <laughs> so you have the glamour glow. So you know, just because yeah. you're always kind of bit blind. Yeah, yeah. And my my um my nan used to say to my granddad, oh um oh Bob, oh Bob, I'm getting old. And he'd go, don't look in the mirror then. And I'm like, how great is oh, that? That makes sense. Don't look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> just so so that you can still be happy. You don't have to. You know. Yeah. Isn't that great? And in our industry, that can be challenging. Yeah, I have to say. But I don't want to be thinking I'm still hot when I'm eighty with my drag tights on. <laughs> but you could. But I could. I could. Totally could. I totally could. And maybe you should. Yeah. Um, as a thought, I'm actually gonna. gonna yeah. Oh, I'm gonna well, do gonna write a lyric. I'm gonna ruminate over that. Yeah. Pontification. Because really, what is hot? Hot is being present. Is being present and being awake. And being. Sitting in your skin yes. and being comfortable in your skin. Absolutely. Which I think. I see uh, there are some questions up on that oh, yeah. screen that are coming in. My beautiful, my beautiful followers, thank you so much for showing up for us today. I, I wish I could see you as always. Do we have. Um, oh. Ah. Shall I just go and change quickly? Yeah, I would love I mean, that. shall I? Yeah, go ahead and change. Two seconds. I'd love to, but well, we only have ten minutes. Okay. So, um, do you guys have any questions for Luciana? I'm gonna I'm gonna move closer to the camera so that I can actually and actually read. I love the okay, so somebody, Alex, Alex Marso would love you. Ciao, Alex. Yeah, would love you to talk about your new art and what's coming, and he's asking where to find it. So come on in. There she is. Well, look, I'm just going to put this casual thing on. <laughs> <laughs> but look at this. This is like a punk tabard. Okay, so please. No, the guy who makes my clothes is the guy who does. Um, look at that. That's, great. That's fabulous. Uh, when I'm feeling a stress, I can just wrap myself. Um, yeah, so the guy who makes these clothes is Jeffy Bryan, and he does all of Duran Duran and the Pet Shop Boys. So that straw dress you saw earlier, I went backstage because obviously Neil Nick's doing um, backing vocals for Neil Tennant, and Neil Tennant had the straw the straw dress. Sorry, Alex, I, this isn't an answer to your question. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> no, talking we, about we this. Have veered, veered off topic. I'm digressing. But as you're talking, do you know what I'm thinking? How fabulous you are! I'm that also. <laughs> that's always that's always in the background. I was thinking, Nick, Luciana. Mm -hmm. Would you guys uh, uh, sing a, a little a cappella? No. Oh my god! You, you, can be, you can be off camera. No. <laughs> I, I would love you to sing because you sang at my birthday. You sang La Vie, La Vie en Rose. Rose. And I just think. There you are. No, there you are. Oh my god, I can't, I'll just do like two lines. Okay, well, um, four lines. The, and Nick, if you're feeling you this. Voilà, le portrait sans retouche, à l'homme auquel j'appartiens. There you go. Oh, wait. Oh, one more. Quand des mains dans sa main, Je ne sais pas ce que c'est Je me prends dans sa main, Il me parle tout bas, Je vois la vie en rose, Il me dit des mots d'amour, the mother to the joe, it's something quelque chose. Il est d'entre dans mon cœur, une part de bonheur. Get the accent wrong a bit. Nobody knows. C'est lui pour moi, moi pour lui, toute la vie. Il me l'a dit la journée pour la vie. Et dès que je l'aperçois, alors je sens en moi. Mon cœur qui bat. Woo! 
end scene. <laughs> and end scene. I love you. you. I love you too. Now that was never gonna happen. That was never in the books. I know. And I, and I, and I knew if I said it, you would. You would. Oh yeah. Only said no, so I did it. I was like, yeah, yeah. Good, good thing you didn't mention that to me. But right, Alex. Oh. Hi. What was the question? So, so you guys. The question was, what uh, what are you working on now, and how okay. can people find your art? And I think uh, after that we might go wrap up. Right, this, um, and there are many pieces. Let's see if we can, uh, can, we, can we pan it? around Let's here. Pan. This is my belly. We're going to pan. That's, you know, pan. that's an industry term. We're going <laughs> <we're gonna> to pan. <laughs> um, so this is Bowie. We say and Bowie. Oh, we, oh, we say Bowie. We say, you say potato. You say I say potato. potato. I say tomato. You say tomato. Potato. Potato. Tomato. Tomato. Let's talk about potato. potato. <laughs> Um, and this is the Basquiat, which goes okay, Basquiat is along here. with the uh, uh, is you know Basquiat is there, here along with the Andy with the Andy Warhol, and I called that true romance. But you can find all of these on my um, uh, web page, Luciana dot com, and yes. it's music, art, and fashion. Okay, so you can see all of the artworks and see if you feel it anything. And prints are available. Should you wish to purchase. <laughs> and you know what? This is probably the first in uh, a series of three interviews because we're going to come back and we're going to see where the art has evolved to. Love that. And then we're also going to see um, Luciana post her Revista M magazine yes. layout, which is coming out soon. Um, how, how do they find it? They just Is it online? Is it digital? Or can you it's, go? Yeah, it's coming out. What they've just put little teasers out now, but right now it's not digital just because it's not out. Right. Oh, so okay. All their all their okay, words so, was teasers. But then you can go to your Instagram and we can see it, right? When, it, when it's out. When it's out. When definitely. It's out. Okay. Lastly, <laughs> lastly, you have a, a t-shirt line. Yeah. Ah! Oh, I have a tote bag for you as well. Wait. I'm getting a tote bag as a as a, yeah. as a gift. So I've got t-shirts and tote bags. Look at this. And should you should you wish to go to Luciana.com? <laughs> This is the tote bag. It's all very casual, and you can just sort of like wear my name. Oh, look, love oh, that look. one. Yeah. So these are available online, Luciana.com, mm. in the fashion section. And you have T-shirts, too. I have T-shirts, yes. That's fabulous. And that fab, yeah. So just the T-shirt with the – oh, look, there's the T-shirts. Oh, love it, love it. But, yeah, so that's what I'm, – I'm, listen, I'm a busy girl. You are a busy girl, and I really appreciate that you took the time to, to, to be with us. Can I just say how fabulous you are? You can. Yeah, tell me more. <laughs> tell me, tell me what you think about me. No, seriously, I'm in love with you. I, I find you're a light, and I love that you have this connection with everyone, and everyone feels you. You're you are a light. So thank, thank you. you, thank, thank you, you for letting love. me be part of your oh, light. I, I love feel you. The same way about you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Yes. All the beautiful fans yes. and beautiful followers and beautiful interactions and I. Love it. And I appreciate it so much. Yes. You have no idea. So you lift me up and I hope um, that uh, yeah. we have lifted you up in some way today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for letting me be part of this. Yeah. Thank you for having having, uh, having the time to come and be and with in us. doubt, swing these. <laughs> Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Mwah. Welcome to Antoinette and Friends, you guys. Just let's ask, answer this one question. This is from Italy. What have you learned? I'm translating because you know I speak Italian. That's a... I speak Italian too. Get the hell away from me. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't a woman who looked like us. They were all grown and they were talking about their facelifts to their husbands, uh, which is where I am now. <laughs> That's exactly my career. You are such an open book. I want to know something that nobody knows about you, and I'm going to get it out of him today. Huh? I might forget what nobody knows. <laughs> I, I, to me, like to watch as a doorman and to watch all these great comedians, it was like a it was like a college. It was a college of sorts where you got to watch the professors every night, you know. And you can learn as much watching a. A bad comedian as you could watch in a good comedian. You know I mean? Did you get laid that night? He said, yeah. I go, now I got to start carrying around a notebook and pen. But that's a true story. And it just, it just, it just made my day.